Look, Luise. Oh, holy crap, Nicole. What does this mean? What is this? It's a flying message. I thought we just go back to the basics today. <laughs> okay, I understand. But then you will also need something like this. Welcome to Distressable Junkalocities. Transform your found objects into junk journal art. Junkalocities is a coined term combining junk journal and curiosities, created by Nicole at Nature Spirit Journals and myself, Luisa Heinzel. Just dig out all those forgotten curious findings from your drawers, the ones you've kept to use in your junk journal one day. We are celebrating 20 years of distress this year and invite you to celebrate, craft and most importantly, distress along with us. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel and in this episode of Distressable Drunkalocities, we want to go back to the basics. Meaning, we are going to distress our paper with several different basic tools and mediums and we want to create a mini booklet similar to this one here, which Tim has in his book, Distressables 2. So the project of today is totally inspired by this. Look at this cutie. <laughs> this is just so cool. And for this project, you can take out all of your collected, perhaps not all of them, <laughs> some of your collected papers and little ephemera pieces. I want to go a little bit into detail about different kinds of papers with this project because distressing is the one thing, but different uh, materials is the other thing. And I think you should have some things in mind before you start. And especially if you are new to junk journaling or distressing or whatever, paper crafting in general, then you should perhaps know some things about the different materials you could use for something like this. For today's project, I have chosen some junkalocities from my stash, things that are really old on the one hand, some vintage materials also, but also some things that I want to use up because I have a lot of them in my stash. So let's quickly go through what I have here. This is a really old file folder and I want to make my base for this mini booklet out of this material. Really cool. It's sturdy and it has this wonderful green color. Then I have some old book pages here. I think you have a ton of those in your stash as well. <laughs> and I also found this in my stash. I got that in a Happy Mail. And this is really, really cool. It's already falling apart a little bit, but that doesn't matter for today's project. It has this really wonderful handwriting here. And also some of these little pictures here. Uh, I don't know the English word for this. In German, it would be Glanzbilder. But I want to make the pages for my mini booklet out of this material. Then I also have taken out some playing cards because I think that is also a really cool junkalocity. This is glossy. So what to do if you want to put ink onto those because that can't work without uh, preparing them. I also have this little flashcard here. This is an ideology flashcard, one of the smaller ones. And I have taken this out because it's nearly the same material like a playing card. You can see it's also very glossy and we have to do something with this so that ink can hold on this material and that it can dry on such a material. And then I also have some of these photos, also ideology photos. And I came to the idea to use those, not only because I have a ton of those left in my stash and I want to use them up, but also because Tim has a photo here on his mini booklet as well. And I thought we could perhaps try to include a photo to our mini booklet as well. I think that's a really nice idea, even if these photos um, don't show me. <laughs> but... 
<laughs> that's perhaps also not so good for your eyes. And then <laughs> I also have some postage stamps here. These have been laying on my desk for the last few weeks, I would say. I wanted to put them into my little postage stamp album, but then I realized whoo, that I don't have enough space in my <laughs> postage stamp album anymore. So, yeah, they have been there. And when I thought about this project, I thought, why don't we use those? Meaning, please use the things that you have laying around. Um, you can, can use nearly any paper material that you might have. I also have taken out some more <clears throat> ideology things. I don't know how many of these I want to use today. I'm not sure about that. We will see that during the process. These are the number strips. Um, and then I have these little guys here. This is mainly the curator ephemera pack. Uh, no, it's it's uh, curator snippets, I guess. I always mix up those uh, ideology names, but you can see what this is. You could also, if you don't have something like this, take um, your scissors out and cut out some tiny pieces from magazine pages or book pages or even um, food packages or something like that to get some tiny things with numbers or little writing on them. Okay, so I think that's everything I have um, here. And then, uh, since Nicole has my vintage photo ink pads now, because, you know, I've just thrown them to her, <laughs> I want to use <laughs> scorched timber as my main color for inking today. Of course, if we go back to the basics, we could think, okay, we have to use vintage photo, but that's, of course, not necessary. If you don't have vintage photo, then you can use any other ink that you have, any other, other color, I mean. So I'm going to use scotched timber today. And, um, of course, if you don't like brown or if you don't like vintage or something like that, then, of course, you could also do everything I do here today with another color. You could also use pink or green or yeah, whatever you like. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this piece here to my die cut machine and I want to cut out the base shape for my mini booklet. I'm going to use this die cut here by Zizix and Tim Holtz. The number is 665930 and this is already exactly the shape that we need if you don't have this die cut you could also of course cut this with your paper trimmer or you could use some scissors or perhaps you have these you know there are some of these uh, fancy tools available where you can cut those tabs uh, into your paper perhaps you have something like that and you want to use that so <clears throat> I'm going to cut one of these I mean I'm a little confused at the moment because I already have prepared it so that, that I don't have to <laughs> disturb myself and um, stand up from my chair. So I already have this here. So this is this is going to become the base, meaning the cover of this little booklet. And I have cut two more of these little folder things from two pages of this little thing. And I want to start <clears throat> by inking these, but... When I fold these, I can already feel that this paper um, is really fragile. And before I ink these, I want to reinforce the fold there a little bit. Because later on, I want to stitch uh, my pages into this cover. And that is, of course, a problem if this is fragile. So I'm going to use some masking tape and just put that over here and I just fold these little guys to the other side and just stick them down here because that gives an additional interesting area and now I want to ink the edges of all of these three things here for that I want to use my distress ink scorched timber as I said you could use any other color as well and for doing that, there are different tools available. I have these, which I like to use for inking the edges. You could use something like this, like a finger sponge. I think that's the, the English name for that. Um, really handy, of course. You could also use something like this. Um, both of these are by Ranger. And you have these little things here, which you can 
put on here with the help of this Velcro thing. And then you can have different of these for the different colors. For such a small thing, I like to use something like this or something like this because I can handle that easier. But if you don't have that, you can also, of course, use this thing. So let's take this and let's just go around the edges here. I think the most of you know that and this, yeah, this kind of technique. And that gives you a really nice and aged frame around this whole thing. And especially there where you have folds, you can get a really nice effect by going over those because then you have this really aged look within seconds. And I like to do this inking really irregular because I think the more irregular this is, the more authentic it looks. But of course, you could also do this in a really regular way. And as you can see, and also on the other papers here, this edge looks aged now. These look like they have been used very often. But at the same time, you can see that you have a really like crisp edge here from the ink. And then you have a little blending to the inside, but then this blended um, area stops there and it doesn't go further to the paper material. So what if you want to have mm, a really smooth blending here? Tim has that on his <coughs> booklet as well. You can see that here. For that, I like to use such a brush. So for this, I want to use my oxide ink scorched timber. And even if I have inked this already, I want to go over this again to get this blending to the inside. You could also, of course, skip this step with the ink, but I like to do both. That's, you know, I don't know why, but I like to do that. <laughs> I think it makes a difference. So I'm going to load up my brush here and then... Um, I think that is something that I have ignored for a very long time. And I was wondering why my blending is like weird and doesn't get so smooth. Because I've ignored that you have to start on your surface here and not on the paper. If you would press your brush to the paper, you would get something like this. And then you have this little blob there. And you know, that doesn't look nice and you can't blend it anymore then. So start here on your surface next to the paper and then do it like this. And with this, you can get a really, really nice blended effect as you can see. So I also vary the direction. So I go with the clock, you know, cl clockwise and this. Uh, you have you have told me how that is said in English, but I forgot it. Ah, that's not good. But as you can see, now I can get not only this blending, but also a nice variation to what I've done before. So then, later on, I want to have these little guys in here. So that we then have pages for our little booklet as well and I want to decorate the front here to have a really nice cover so and for that I want to use different materials on the one hand I want to use a piece of a book page so let's see I think these are by coincidence yes <laughs> exactly the, the right height so I just want to tear this off. I'm just thinking I want to make a little trick I've learned from Tim I guess. So I'm going to use my ink and I am going to ink the edges here especially the one which I've just torn. Ah, oh, This paper is a little bit flimsy. And then let's spritz some water and 
this is the torn edge and I want to put this torn edge into the water just like this I don't know how much we will see of this later on the cover here but I just wanted to show you that you can do that and perhaps you have some project where this edge is going to be seen I especially like this here that looks like it has gotten wet and that is a really nice effect I would say so let's glue this down here so let's then decide which of these photos we want to use here I don't want to have that too big hmm we could either cut around here to make this a little smaller because I really like this with the red and the green or <laughs> we take this because it's smaller <laughs> let me check something <clears throat> the plan is I want to take this and put that here and the photo somehow either like this or like this and <laughs> I also want to use a playing card to have that behind the photo somehow this would be good I think mm. with this one I think the playing card has not enough space anymore yep okay so let's take oh <laughs> you need the playing card let's take this photo all of these have one thing in common and that's that the surface is glossy meaning if I would use my inking tool here and I would go over this you can see there is some ink but it's really light and the problem is if I go over that with my finger then it comes off because the ink can't dry on such a glossy surface so we have different possibilities to prepare a surface like this for inking and with that it gets distressed at the same time I like to use a sanding disc this is the sanding disc by Ranger uh, that are these little round things here and you can just put that to such a blending tool and then she can go over this here and sand the surface of this if you don't have a sanding disc a uh, sandpaper would do the job as well but choose a sandpaper which is not too rough because as you can see with doing this you um, take off a little bit of the image as well of course here on the playing card I like that really much and I like to bring the pattern of the playing card to the background with this method but imagine we would do this on a photo like this if you do that and I will only do it here on the edges because you can immediately see what happens of course the top layer is going to come off as well with this method and I don't want to scratch into her face so I do this really carefully so that I get a little bit of this effect and if you don't like this you could also just skip this step but I think this looks really really interesting and we can of course do that here as well here I also want to stay on this beige part of this card I don't want to scratch into the word because I want to be able to read that later like yeah, like a caption or something for my booklet and let's then take our ink blending tool and I do I want scorched timber here again yeah why not why not so I like to go over this just like so that seems to be a lot now but please wait a second I am trying to massage this in so that the ink can go into these little damages we've just made with 
the sandpaper. You can do that, of course, also irregular. So let's perhaps do it here like this and perhaps a little bit like this so that it's not um, covering the whole surface. And then I like to take whoop, a damp paper towel and I go over this and as you can see, so I will only do half of it so that you can see it better. The ink comes off from this glossy surface where we don't have the sanding and there where the sanding is, the ink goes into these little areas and that makes it really, really interesting in my eyes. And it looks, of course, also really old and distressed. <laughs> And here I like to do the same thing, but I have sanded more here. So I'm expecting that this stays browner than this. And I also want to blend this a little bit with the help of the water I have on my paper towel here. So I massage this in. <coughs> we can also, uh, if you want to compare that, you can do that now. <laughs> And we can also, of course, take our fingernail tool or if you don't like that, you could use your scissors and you can destroy the material here a little bit. I like to separate these layers a little bit because the inside of this paper material isn't glossy, of course, so that the ink can hold there. And if I take this now and I go over here, I can get rid of the white paper and at the same time it looks a little bit like yeah, nearly like burnt or something. Really easy. <laughs> okay, so then with the photo I want to show you um, something else that I like to do. I like to take some clear gesso. In this case it's the Dina Wakely Media Clear Gesso and I like to put a little bit of that on here to seal the surface on the one hand and to make it a little bit rough so that the ink which I want to apply in a second can hold on there as well. This would also work with for example the Ideology Paper Dolls or any other kind of photo thingy which has this like glossy surface it would work on both of these as well of course and then I want to do another technique on the photo and on my postage stamps so I try to decide which I want to use and for that technique I uh, want to use my distress ink again you could also use the oxide ink, of course, but I think in this case I like the ink better for some weird reasons I can't explain. <laughs> so I put that here to my mat and then I spritz just a little bit of water and then I like to dip these in here. Depending on the material you have, you can also layer this, meaning you dip it in, dry it, dip it in again, dry it and so on. For the postage stamps I want to do only one layer because they are so thin <clears throat> that I have the feeling that if I do that more often, can you see it's already curling here, I mean it would be possible but I don't want to ruin my postage stamps. <laughs> but I show you what I mean on this photo. So I'm going to dip this in here. And I like to do that in sections so that I don't get the ink where I don't want to have it. So I'm going to dry this. And as you can see, the ink makes this really interesting shape now. And you get this like crater around it. Now you can dry it completely. Or what I like to do is I like to take the rest off with a dry paper towel. And then you have another variation and it looks not like, you know, 
this whole blob of ink, but you have this lighter area there where you can see the photo through, and I like that. So I'm going to do this in several areas here on the photo. And what I like about this is, mm, remember we've used the sandpaper on the photo, and then we've added the clear gesso. And that gives you the effect that you now have these scratches in white because the gesso has sealed the surface compared to this or compared to the flash card. Can you see the difference? Here and here these little damages are brown and here they are white. And even with only one layer of ink this looks just so interesting. Can you see how interesting the ink has dried here? So that almost looks like it was several layers. Ah, oh, that looks fantastic. <laughs> so now I want to I want to have the postage stamps more in the background. So perhaps I can glue one here. So then I will glue the playing card, the photo, and this little thing. Mm, and perhaps we can take one of these and put that behind here. And I also want to use some staples just for a little bit of decoration. So I'm using my tiny attacher here because this makes the cutest staples in the world. Look how small they are. I want to have them only on the photo and not, not on the other elements. Yeah, I think that's great. And what about what about a little eyelet or something here just for decoration? Ta da! <laughs> that is really nice. Okay, so then we can, I think, already take these and sew them in. Mm, I will go to my sewing machine now and sew them in with my sewing machine but of course you could also hand stitch these or you could also leave these loose in here. Yeah, No one says that the pages have to be attached in here. You could also do that without sewing them. Ta-da! <laughs> This is just so cute. I just love this. This is really perfect as a tiny addition for a junk journal. Or, of course, it's nice by itself as well. But in a junk journal, this gives you, of course, a lot of space for making some notes or something like for something like hidden journaling, for example. I really, really like this. And I just um, thought, why don't we add a little clip here? <laughs> I came to that idea because Tim has this clip on his mini booklet as well. He did this in a little different way, but why can't we use this as an inspiration for just holding it together like this? Or you could also use this clip at the same time to attach that to your uh, page in the journal, just like this. Or you could also, I mean, I've just grabbed this card here because it was laying around on my desk. But imagine you have, for example, a greeting card or a birthday card or something like that. And you want to um, give someone a little present like this, then you could easily attach that. Imagine this was the birthday, birthday card and this was attached here. Then you have a card and a gift at the same time. Do you know what I mean? And let's then think about... What we can add to these little tabs and I think <clears throat> these number strips are just perfect for something like that. Oh yes, that was surprisingly fast. 
this decision. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to ink the edge here as well. And of course you could also do something like this with your fingernail or with some scissors so that this looks also more interesting. So let's glue that down there. And what I also like to do is, once I've glued this down, I like to go with my blending tool into, yeah, on the one hand, this little damage here, and on the other hand, around here a little bit, so that it looks like this was there from the very beginning, and then it has gotten dirty. Otherwise, it looks like, you know, you've just glued it down. Uh, I mean, we have glued it down, but you know what I mean. So here I also want to try something in the middle here because um, we have one tab here and the other one here. And I'm just thinking, can we perhaps, I need some scissors to imagine that better. Scissors? Tweezers, I mean. Holy cow. <laughs> I wanted to try if it's possible to add a third tab here somehow because I like odd numbers of things mm. but this is this is nice but I want to have a different color what about something totally different like this this one why not yeah so let's ink this and then we can just glue that to one of the pages of the booklet so that it peeks out there a little bit. That looks good. Okay. <laughs> and then <coughs> here on the last tab, I want to stamp instead of gluing something down because I want to leave this green color here because with this little tab we also get the connection to the color in the background of the cover here. So um, how can I manage that so that I can imagine how big the stamp has to be? <laughs> I have the <laughs> eccentric CMS 448 set here by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Where is my favorite stamp from this set? Oh, I have already taken it out. Here, here, here we go. <laughs> Louise, Louise, what is going on here? So let's stamp. But I want to use black ink so that this gets really a nice contrast. And then when you close this, it looks like this, and I really like this. Oh! <laughs> but now I also want to fill up some of these empty areas with some stamping, because I think that makes the whole thing more interesting. That is a trick I've learned from my dear friend Malis at Mali Design. Malise, if you're watching, I will be forever thankful because when I saw her doing that, I mean, stamping to those like tiny areas, I was like, what the heck is she doing? When I saw it for the first time, I was like, that is too much stamping. I thought that, that in the first moments I, I saw it, but when she was finished and she showed the finished piece, that was, uh, I mean, when I saw it the first time, it was, I think, like a, a folio kind of thing. And when I saw the finished thing, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to take out my stamps. That looks just so cool. And since I saw that her doing that, I'm doing this the whole time. <laughs> and sometimes... Especially when you make a collage, for example, then it can happen that you think, ah, something tiny is missing somewhere, but you don't want to glue another piece of little paper. And then stamping, and especially this like method of stamping, is really helpful in my eyes. For example, 
I have used this postage stamp here to connect the photo and this flashcard. And now I'm thinking here something is missing. So I can use a stamp instead of gluing something else down there. I can just, if I know where I want to have it, <laughs> stamp it here so that it gives me additional interest but without covering everything up which is underneath and I really like that. Yeah, I think that is good. So then we can perhaps think about some splatters. I'm just thinking about some scorched timber splatters because we've used scorched timber all over this thing here. Mm. If you want to make splatters now, please think about the surface of the different materials you've used. Because if you have um, left a lot of glossy areas, like for example here on the card, we have not sanded this, so ink and oxide ink would not hold here on this surface. Meaning, we can't use these for making the splatters but we can of course use some acrylic paint because that can dry on such a glossy surface like this flashcard here. I'm going to use the distress paint scorched timber in this case and I think I also want to have some golden splatters in a second because we have this golden eyelet there but no matter what color you use please um, think about the medium you want to use for making your splatters because yeah if you have a glossy surface then your ink and oxide ink can't dry and the distress paint is acrylic paint meaning we can splatter this here and it will dry no matter which surface it is And as you could see, I have done nothing yet on the pages and also here on the back side. I will leave that empty for now because I know that this will go into one of my junk journals. And when I have it there and I, yeah, no matter if I use it for myself or if it's a journal that I sell, um, then there's a lot of space for either my own creativity and things that I then want to do in the journal or for the creativity of the person who buys the journal. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is Distress Paint Tarnished Brass. I want to add a few little splatters somewhere there where this golden eyelet is to get this connection because the eyelet is the only golden thing we have there. And I think deserves a little more attention <laughs> so let's well enough <laughs> okay so then this is our mini booklet i hope you like this and i'm really hoping that you want to create something like this for your own as well and I'm hoping that because this is just so much fun and this is also like a little project which you can do in a few minutes and this it makes you happy <laughs> try this out <laughs> thank you very much for watching and don't forget to watch Nicole's video as well the link to her channel and the direct video link are down below in the description box have a very great and creative day and see you the next time bye bye